Well, hello there, it's your old pal, Wizard Fu, making the game Wraithbinder. And this week, I've been working on the melee animations, the sword animations, the fist animations, the axe animations, everything that has to do with melee combat. Am I pronouncing that right? Is it melee? Melee combat, sorry, maybe. Uh, so check it out. I recorded a little video, uh, two little videos, to illustrate the difference between the animations. So here, is like 10 commits ago this is when uh this is back of the old animations that i that were the melee animations from last week so i'm gonna step through this just like frame at a time actually let's let's go to actually one of these sword swings okay here's where we're gonna start this animation now i'm gonna tick through each frame so there's frame one the player jumps up in the air it looks pretty cool start to start with Frame two, frame three, we've got this big old swoosh, but the sword doesn't really line up with it. And the swoosh is really thin. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And now the player is just basically bringing the sword back. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And um, here is the sword animation from the other side. So we've got the, the same exact animation. This this old system only had two, well, one melee animation, melee. I, I'm, I apologize to anyone that cares about pronunciation if I'm just butchering that word. But anyways, um, so there's only one animation, right? It kept doing the same one over and over and over. And you can see it's the same from all angles. It's just the, you know, at a different rotation. So that's about what it looked like before. It's... Uh, sort of a passable animation you know it looks okay to to uh to my eye right now but i could tell there's a lot to be improved right maybe you can too if you're an animator or an artist or you can just have a good eye for things you'd be like you know what that needs to be a lot better and here's another really huge thing about this old um combat system it's the timing too the timing is wrong it instantly hits as soon as the player starts the animation. So let's find the start. Here we go. So right there is uh, this frame. The player is not attacking. The next frame, the player is attacking. And you can see those minus fours have already shown up on the two pillars on the left and the right of the player because the attack happens ex already. But really the attack should happen, boom, on this second frame when or this frame right here when we've got this big old swoosh going through the air that's when you feel like as a player you should really be connecting and the damage should occur should occur right then so uh my attack components have always had this sort of that sort of system in there to delay the attack until it's um it's ready but um until the damage should actually hit but i didn't <laughs> i had that code somehow like turned off here it is delay and duration so delay is the amount of seconds to delay um, until the attack actually hits from the point where you start the animation to where it drops. So those are the two big issues. Number one is sort of a weak animation. It's really it's really lackluster. You could that's a good word for it. This animation is pretty lackluster compared to this next one I'm going to show you. And secondly, the timing's wrong. And thirdly, there's there's other issues, but I won't go into it in too much more detail. So let's go ahead and look at the next uh, this next movie I recorded here. Now we've got the new animations. We've got a brand new animation that looks way sicker for um, for the melee, the combat, and uh, and then we've also got an alternate. So it's, it not only does sort of a slash to the right, but it also does a slash to the left, and the timing has been corrected. So let's go ahead and look at this frame by frame there we go okay so here's frame one players still got the sword sort of behind them but you notice now they're not jumping in the air I noticed that these old animations the player jumped into the air and that was kind of cool and it looks really kind of neat in the when you pause time but also, you don't really know what the heck's going on. Like, if you pause time, you don't really, you can't really tell that the player is up in the air, except for the fact that you've got this green circle underneath them. Um, 
So, but anyways, check it out. This It just feels a lot better in the game when your player doesn't jump into the air. And now we've got some huge swooshes. The swoosh animation is just way... It, for having that swoosh be way bigger really helps the, the combat to feel like you're really connecting with every single one of your blows. And then now we've got the player really getting, twisting their whole body into the motion. And the cape is flying into the air. Every bit of the player's body is twisting a bit. You'll see it better from this north angle. Let's check this out. We got, this is the, also now we're doing the second animation instead of the first. Boom. Look how, look how into it the player is in that third frame right there. Look how far the, their body is getting into that motion. Really improves things just to see that, that happening like that. Wham! And it feels awesome in the game to be like, this. you feel like way more powerful. as a, this, is, this is a really good angle right here. Look how much, look at that. That angle of the player's head and the cape right there. It's sick. So it, all the way, the player just like all the way into the motion. I noticed there's a, there's a rotation issue again. The player's sword should not be at that angle at that point. Ugh, I've been working on bugs with that, these rotations like crazy. Let me show you why I've been working on bugs with that. Um, it's just that basically in every one of my animations, there's the whole um, the whole blender file is set up with objects being parented to objects beneath them. So for example, the hips is the first thing and then the core of the player right here is the child of the hips and then the chest is the child of the core, the arms are the child of the chest, etc. Um, and what that means is that if I rotate the player's core right here, it rotates everything above it. So you notice how, see how the, the the core has been rotated and so and now the chest has and the cape has and the head has and the hair everything that's connected to the the core is now been rotated 45 degrees i can go in here and like anti rotate things if i wanted i could be like oh, oops that's not the one if i wanted to make the player <laughs> that's not it either the player's z rotation for their head that would that would sort of correct the motion a little bit but we we've also got a a Y rotation or something in there going on. But anyways, those two would cancel each other out in my in my procedural animation code inside my game. It would cancel it cancel it out so that would be a pure rotation which would look really good. But anyways, having these having this ability to rotate things at an angle really helps like especially with this cape flaring out, right? But the challenge is okay, if you have if you have this rotating, that that rotates everything else beneath it. So if you've got a rotation here at your core and then maybe a slight rotation going on or even like a dramatic rotation going on in the upper arm and then a slight rotation going on in a couple different axes on the X and Z axes here for their player's um, arm. And let's say you add a weapon into that hand too. Now you've got like rotation after rotation after rotation. So you, it's just like all of those compound together and it makes the code brittle. Uh, I've gone back and forth with several different methods. In fact, let's just look at some code really quick so you can illustrate like illustrate what the heck I'm talking about. Um, this is in the keyframe which gets parsed from Blender and we're in not apply handedness, consolidate transforms. Um, basically consolidate transforms goes and takes all the rotations so like, for example, like, you know, it takes, if, if we're talking about the lower right arm, then we have to go and assemble all the rotations that lead up to that from its parents. So we've got a 45 degree Z rotation here and a 10 degree X rotation. Those all stack up to the point where you've got a vector or an array of rotations to process here in this consolidate transforms method. This consolidate transforms method goes in I had this thing to reorient rotations based on the parent's rotation. And that worked for me for a few months. And then all of a sudden I started doing all these way more complicated rotations and now it's not working anymore. I have no idea why it's not working anymore. So I basically put in a switch to not reorient. And instead of reoriented, it's just consolidates transforms by adding them if it can. And that happens here in this other consolidate transforms method, which basically just looks at each axis 
and goes, can I just add these two axes together? Like if it, we've got an X rotation in the parent, we've also got an X rotation in the child. Can't those two just be added together? Pretty much, yes. Um, but the, the real solution here I should go to is matrices so that I can just multiply them together and get one matrix at the end. But I've always not... Ugh. I've always kind of been hesitant to do that because I've got this system in place already with all these, uh, basically an, an array of rotations. So anyways, there's some code to be done left to get these animating perfectly. But for now, it's looking really good and I'm really happy with how this looks in the game. Let's go ahead and run the game. And in fact, let's turn off limit players so we can see some other new stuff I've worked on this week, which are... Two new buildings. There's there's the ward building and there's the mine building, which technically mines are sort of like a weapon, right? You're putting down a mine, but it really helps to have it technically be a building because then you're using a resource to put them down. And it's also just makes sense because it works with the existing building code, etc. So let's go ahead and place down a mine. Did I get enough? Uh, let's see, we got 24, 29. That's, that should be enough. Let's try and set a mine right here. So if an enemy comes through this teleporter, they'll hopefully trigger this mine. Okay, I set it down on the ground there, but you can't really see it. So let's create another one. There it is on the ground. It's that little green thing. Now we just sit here and wait. I don't know if this is going to work. We might have to go find somebody else. I don't see anybody. I'm looking at the mini-map in the top right, and we don't get anybody. You can't really tell. Let's go ahead and just run over to that side of the map. Let's use the teleporter. See if we can find... Maybe we can put a, a mine here in their base. Oh, ooh, check it out. Ooh. I thought that turret was dead. Oh shoot, it's exploding. Oh! They exploded because it's... it's oh, wait, let's put another one down real quick. It's exploding because it's near the player's base. Now it's going to explode again because it's near that other player. But this is a pretty sweet thing, right? We've got... Mines. Uh, one thing I need to work on is making sure the mines are invisible to... Um, opponents. I haven't done that yet. But we've got another item. It's called the ward. Do I have enough for that? Yeah, I do. Okay, let's build a ward. I'm going to build a ward right here. This is just a floating like sort of antenna thing. And... Um, it basically gives me sight right there, so I can leave that ward there. And now you can see on the mini-map, I've still got that area exposed that I just left. So, that's in, that's my character, well, gosh, I, it's hard to explain where I am on the mini-map there. But I'm in the top middle of the mini-map. Oh, he just killed my ward! He destroyed it! The AI will go and kill my buildings if it finds them and it decides to kill them. But it, so I just dropped another one. We're looking at the top right of the mini map there. And you can see as I move away, we've still got that area. I wonder why that one red player is still visible even though he's in the fog of war. Or, yeah, he's inside the fog of war. He shouldn't be visible. There's a red player right in the middle. It's That's a bug. But anyways, the ward item, super cool. This is going to be a sweet thing for infiltration of enemies and knowing where players are, intelligence on the map, and the mine item is going to be totally sweet. Like, I'm, I can see that being really fun to, like, sneak around and boom, put down a mine and, like, haha, <laughs> wait for somebody to come by and hit it. Oh, it's a trap. I like it. Um, so that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and we'll come at you with another update. Make it Wraith Binder next week. We'll see ya!